Hey everybody, in this video, you are going to learn nine sales negotiation tips that can help you win at the price you want and close deals on time at the end of the quarter. Okay, the tips you're going to learn in this video are proven through 41 quarter ends, through two economic downturns, and through the time and experience where I grew a company called Gong from $200,000 to $200 million in annual recurring revenue and a $7.2 billion valuation. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you nine SaaS negotiation tips I learned through it all so that you can close more deals on time and at the prices you want. Number one, do not begin negotiating until you get your customer to admit that you are vendor of choice. This is particularly important to do and to stay true to in competitive deals. So if you haven't beaten the competition yet and you're still trying to close a deal and your customer starts bartering with you or haggling over price, take a step back and say, look, I am happy to work toward a win-win agreement here, but it doesn't make sense for us to start negotiating on price until you have chosen your vendor of choice, regardless of price. So let me ask you this, if price were not an issue, would you choose to move forward with us? Now, if they say yes, now you can start negotiating on price and game on. If they say no, then your next question is, well, what steps do we have to take to confidently get you to a point where you have chosen vendor of choice? Okay, so the tip here is to delay negotiating on price until you've been dubbed vendor of choice, because if you don't, all you're doing is creating a painful race to the bottom where the customer pits you against your competitor and it is a game of quote unquote winning and the person who wins is those, the person who gives away the most on price. Number two, don't negotiate until price is the last issue that if resolved would get the deal done. This is similar to the first tip, although it's not just applicable to competitive deals. And so the principle here is don't negotiate until it's the last thing. So as soon as the customer starts negotiating with you on price, haggling, you immediately ask, let's say we agreed on price right now, what steps would you still need to take or would your company still need to take before we decided to move forward with a commercial agreement? Now, if their answer to that is light or trivial or there's not much, then game on. Again, start negotiating on price, uh, you are free to negotiate at that point. But if they start saying things that there is obvious work to be done, there has to be a legal review, there's a procurement review, uh, some executive needs to sign off on this, then you simply take a step back and say, great, we are happy to make sure we arrive at a win-win in terms of price and the spirit of partnership. It seems like we still have a lot of work to do before it makes sense for us to have that conversation. And so let's tackle those other things and then come back to the table and see what we can do to arrive at a win-win when it comes to price. Number three, bring your champion to the negotiation table. Okay, most of you are probably negotiating with procurement. If you're selling deals that are 20, 30, $50,000 or more, most likely procurement's gonna be involved. Now, when you get into the room with procurement, they negotiate in a complete vacuum. They don't bring the context of the business value to the negotiation. Their job is to simply grind you down on price and the more blind they are to the business value, the better for them. And so your goal is to see if you can bring your business champion into that conversation. So there is a voice of reason who understands the business value within the negotiation room. Now I get as much as anybody else that this is hard to pull off, right? Your champion's not always going to be able to make it. They're not always gonna agree. And in some cases, companies even have policies where your champion has to go silent on you while the company's procurement team is negotiating with you on price. That's not a reason for you to not shoot your shot though. Okay, so don't let the fact that this is unlikely to happen prevent you from asking because 20% of the time it is gonna work and the CXO or whoever your business champion is, is going to be in the negotiation room with you and you just probably saved yourself dozens of percentage points of discounts and a hell of a lot of headache just by getting that person in the room with you. So shoot your shot. 
Number four, very similar to the last one, start every negotiation session by reviewing the business value. Okay, you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. This should be, you know, maybe 60 seconds or so. But the point is to not negotiate in a vacuum. I've seen so many tech sales and SaaS salespeople jump straight into a negotiation session and they just immediately start talking about price and nobody in the room has sight of the business value that is at stake. And so frame each negotiation session with the problem at hand, just like you would frame a demo. You wouldn't walk into a demo call just you know, starting to click around. You would frame their problem with a summary slide. Here's what we've heard. Do the same thing with negotiation sessions. Start each session by saying, with everybody's permission, I would like to review over the next 60 seconds the business value so that we know what's at stake when it comes to coming to a win-win agreement. It will change the color of your negotiations and you can constantly bring that value back to defend your price as you're negotiating. Number five, know your walkaway limit up front. Okay, the worst thing you can do when it comes to defining your walkaway limit, in other words, the limit of when this deal no longer makes sense for you, is to define that in the moment, in the heat of the moment. You are almost certainly going to make a mistake if you try to improv where your walkaway limit is in the heat and in the middle of a negotiation session. Okay, the best negotiators in the world, before they step into the negotiation room or to the negotiating table, define upfront in a cold state of mind where they are willing to walk away. What is their bottom line? So define that up front before you walk into a negotiation session. Number six, as you're negotiating, get a get for every give that you give, okay? Every time you're willing to give something to a customer, whether it's a discount, whether it is you agreeing to a legal term or any other agreement to a concession that your customer has requested of you, get something in return get a case study, get a commitment to closing faster, get something. It almost doesn't matter what the thing is because the principle here is you are teaching your buyer, you're teaching your customer that every time they ask for something, you're gonna get something too. And that slows down the pace of asking for concessions, okay? It almost puts an e-brake on their appetite to ask for more, more, more. Now, on the other hand, if you give in every time your customer asks for something and you don't get something in return, you're feeding a dragon, okay? Dragons only get hungrier the more you feed them. You are accelerating their appetite for more concessions. They think, oh, that was easy. They gave in immediately on this legal term. Maybe I can get away with this one. And maybe I should ask for a steeper price. And maybe, maybe I should ask for free services to go along. And so the principle here is if you give something and you don't get something in return, you are making them hungrier to ask for even more. And on the flip side, if you get something in return for something you're willing to give, you are decelerating their hunger and their appetite for asking for more stuff. Number seven, when your customer has price resistance, isolate it into one of three buckets. As soon as you start getting price resistance, simply use this talk track. You know, at this stage of the negotiation or the sell buy cycle, if we're getting price resistance still, it's usually for one of three reasons. Okay, the first reason is you're not sold on the financial value or the business value you're delivering. And therefore it makes sense that you get a cheaper price to make sure you're getting a healthier return on investment. That's number one. Number two, maybe you are sold on the business case or the financial value or the business value, but there is some sort of logistical constraint preventing you from move forward. You agree with the value, but you can't spend the money for whatever reason. Maybe you just don't have the cash. Maybe there's some sort of log logistical crunch. And number three, maybe none of those are, are true. Maybe you are just being a good steward of your company's capital by trying to get the best deals you possibly can. Now, which of those three buckets do you fall into? Now, here's the beauty of that talk track. As soon as they answer, you simply start problem solving. If they say, I'm not sold on the business value, then you're gonna have to slow down now so you can speed up later. And it kind of gives you an invita invitation to do discovery or just an 
educate that person on the business value uh, that you've discovered with other people so far. Now, if they answer with the second thing, right, there's a logistical issue. Now, they just gave you an invitation to ask a bunch of questions to better understand that logistical issue so that you can sit on the same side of the table with them and solve the problem, right? Maybe it's they have enough cash for half of it now and half of it later because they're going into a new fiscal budgeting cycle, in which case, maybe semi-annual payment terms make sense. In either case, you are now logistically problem solving the issue. And third, of course, they're rarely gonna admit that they're just trying to get a better deal, but it does happen. And part of your job as a negotiator is to convince them that you are at your best and final. It's not gonna get better from here. I promise you, you're getting the best deal possible. Number eight, when in doubt, ask a question. Okay, if you are in a negotiation, which is a complex situation to be in, if you are in doubt what to do next, simply ask a question. Ask your customer, what do you think we should do next? Ask your customer, you know your CFO better than me, you know your boss better than me. How do you think we should position this to her to make sure this gets approved? Okay, the people that are in control of a negotiation session are those that are asking questions. And the beauty is the person answering the questions feels like they're in control. So it's a total win-win here, right? Your buyer feels like you're in, they're in control, but really you're in control because you're asking the questions, you're steering the conversation, and you are gathering new information that will help you seek a win-win negotiation scenario. So when in doubt, ask a question. Number nine and the last tip, effective negotiation starts at the beginning of the sales process, even though negotiation ends up and shows up at the end of the sales process. Okay, the things you do in discovery, the questions you ask, the business pain that you uncover, the way you diagnose the problem and rig it in your favor so you can box out the competition, champion development, multi-threading, aligning with the economic buyer, all of these things done in the first half of the sales cycle make the second half of the sales cycle and negotiating far, far, far easier. So if you feel like you need to up your game, if you feel like you need to take your selling skills to the next level so you can grow and turbocharge your sales success, your income, and your revenue, check out the SaaS Discovery Masterclass. So far, we have over 10,000 SaaS reps, leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs who have signed up and taken this online course and dramatically taken their discovery skills to the next level. They have learned to create urgency from thin air. They have learned to find business pain that money follows. And they do this all in such a way that makes their negotiations later in the sales process 10 times easier to deliver a win-win to the customer. So if that's interesting you, to you, go to go.pclub.io slash discovery. I'm going to put a link to the course in the description of this YouTube video and in the comments. Now, aside from all that, if you liked this video, if you found this video useful, if you're gonna use one of these nine tips or maybe all nine tips, hit the like button, subscribe so that you get notifications so you don't miss a sales tip or a negotiating tip that can change your income and your career. Share this out with your network and comment on the video, right? If you found value in this video, if you wanna make, or if you want me to make more videos like this, simply write YES, capital Y-E-S in the comments. Give me a sign that you're watching and I'll continue to produce videos like this that can help you take your income, your sales success, your negotiating success, and your career to the next level. Thanks guys.